Madeleine and Fort Salem is confusing. And every time I come back to the script, I find something new that I want to talk about because the more I write about it, the more confused the whole situation gets. So strap in into this wild ride that is Motherland Fort Salem's world building and characters. Motherland Fort Salem is a show about witches in the military. It is set in an alternative universe where the witch hunt of Salem ended after one of the victims decided to make a deal with the humans and promised to fight their wars for the rest of eternity. So, witches are real in this world. This is by no means an unique idea, but an interesting idea nonetheless. Anime has been doing the whole magic in the military thing for quite a long time, and one of the more interesting examples is Tanya the Evil. That one is also an isekai and has a lolly that is in reality an old man, but that's besides the point. Anyways, in Motherland we follow our three main characters, Rael Koller, Abigail Bellwetter, and Tally Craven. Rael comes from a line of medics and is the rebel of the group. Abigail is part of the Bellwetter family that are deeply entrenched in the military and Telly did not need to serve but felt obligated to do it. Depending on who ask, the show is about many things. Discrimination, slavery, woman empowerment, freedom fighting and while the show tries to be about all of those things, it's more focused on the entertainment side and the messages that the show wants to convey are often fumbled be it through flawed world building or broken characters. While I like the show, I think talking about single episodes is pretty boring. My focus will be mainly on world building and some of the characters and I think an appropriate place to start talking about the show is the cornerstone of modern witch society, the Salem Accords. I am General Sarah Alder. Welcome to Fort Salem. Sarah Alder, the last witch to be condemned to death in the town of Salem, decided that she wanted to live and so she showed her powers as her last words on the gallows. I guess she dodged a bullet there. <laughs> Anyways, with that display of power, all the signed an accord in Massachusetts Bay Militia and later on the accords are drafted in the American Constitution. In that whole process, Alda became the general of the army and she also figured a way out how to live forever by having so-called biddies, which act as human bastries for Alda, kinda. We don't have the whole accord, but this is the part we have. <clears throat> Being enacted by this general assembly that any child born of a witch shall be held a witch according to the condition of the mother and shall deliver herself bodily to Fort Salem for training in the military arts. Throughout the series, we learned that you can dodge military service as long as you go through some legal procedures shown in the character of Telly. Retirement seems to be a thing for witches and we see that with the character of Quinn. We know she's retired since she's at her city when the main characters have a break and she remains there after they go back to military school. You can also dodge the military service entirely without legal procedures, but you will be persecuted by witch military police, witch military intelligence, or human military police, or human military intelligence. It's not very clear. Some of the Dodgers get killed and some can live completely normal lives, even offering humans their services without any consequences whatsoever, or at least it seems that way. It is also not very clear in the show if the draft is a lottery or not. Telly's mom talks about how she freed her from the lottery of death. Tally. Do you know how hard I worked to get you out of the lottery of death? And Abigail talks about how this was the smallest draft in years. This could be just Telly's mom exaggerating with the language and Abigail just explaining that there are a lot more dodges this year than the last ones. For the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that conscription is mandatory and literally every known witch is conscripted at age 18. I say known witch because throughout the years it seems that certain witch hereditary lines have been completely lost and can therefore not be conscribed. You would expect witches to have location or tracking spells. You would also expect that maybe the government or the witches themselves would test everyone after they are born. But I guess that it's something that the writer just kind of forgot to think about. Something that is actually done in Tanya the Evil. <laughs> So, in more than 300 years, witches have been conscripted into the witch military to fight American wars alongside humans, and in those 300 years, witches have not used their power to gain any political advantage whatsoever. Kinda. The show is very convenient with witch powers. We don't see witch doctors, witch medics, witch police detectives, witch firefighters, witch tailors, witch entrepreneurs, witch actors, witch celebrities in general, witch anything beyond witch soldiers. And you might think that a witch is 
slaves for life and they simply no way out and the show really wants to hammer the point that conscription is slavery conscription is slavery by another name but clearly it's not quite that is it it's almost like the world has never been conceptualized beyond the idea of, of witches in the military in 300 years don't you think that some witches would use the power to change conscription laws if you hold a lot of power in the human and witch society especially if your name is bellwether and apparently the first in the bellwether line to be conscribed was a slave not only is this directly confirmed in the show because the first bellwether to serve in this army was a slave but also further emphasized by the director when sarah alder formed the first witch military the project was immediately to find more witches and alder found so much talent and power in the population of enslaved african americans that the early ranks of her military were largely black people. So in 300 years, an enslaved party that gained massive amounts of power to the point that there are several generals with the name Bellwater in the army has changed absolutely nothing in the conscription laws. At the same time, slaves in the MF world would have been freed since we can literally see a black president. And so I have to ask, are you fucking serious? I could go on for hours and explain how none of this, even in the world of Motherland, which is supposed to run parallel to our world, makes no sense. But I think I figured out why this concept is flawed to its core. And it has to do with time. If we found ourselves 50 years or even 100 years after the Salem Accords, then all of this would make way more sense. Not being able to locate every witch in America for a blooming organization would be indeed a big task. Not having much political power to change anything would make sense since the witch army has not proven itself yet. There would be very little room for witches to expand in different fields like the before mentioned law enforcement, medical or tailoring jobs, and the president would hold the power over witches since there still would be a standing army that at least used guns. This problem with time also rears its head up with the main antagonist factions in the Madeline universe called the Spree and the Camarilla. Oops, was it something I thought? So, the Spree are a terrorist organization of witches that kill innocent humans. Why they do it is not very clear in the beginning of the show, but let's take a look at what the organization does first. In the first episode, they kill 1,600 people in a mall by exploding a balloon that releases a spell forcing everyone present to kill themselves. That includes women, men, elderly, teens, children, and I assume even babies. We can literally see children in the shot. In the overhead shot, there are two people with strollers, and we can see women walking by with a stroller in a different shot. Just to remember real quick, 1,600 innocent people. They have literally nothing to do with anything going on in the witch society. They're not shown to hate witches or despise them. In fact, as far as we know, they're there to commemorate Conscription Day. They are paying their respect to witches who entered the military and sacrificed their lives to defend America. In the same episode, we get a news report that a line cruiser was attacked in a similar fashion, and depending on the cruiser, it might hold 3,000 to 6,000 people in it. So in a very short span of time, the spree has killed between 4,600 to 6,600 innocent people, and all of this without a clear reason to the people in the Motherland universe. Maybe you're not impressed by numbers, so let's take a look at another spree attack. In season 1, episode 3, A Biddy's Life, the spree attack attacks yet again, and this time they freeze a pool to death. Compared to the thousands that the spree have already killed, not many people died here, but it is the brutality of the attack that makes this comically evil. While forcing someone to kill themselves is insane on its own, freezing someone to death is even worse since you're conscious during the process. Your skin will literally begin to crack and break. If you stay conscious for long enough, you will feel like you're inhaling fire and exhaling knives. The pain you will experience right before your inevitable death is unimaginable. So yeah, freezing to death is not something I would wish on my biggest enemies. On top of being comically evil, the spree are not very clear or smart. In season 1, episode 8, City Drop, the army has discovered a spree armory where they mass produce their spell bombs. Unfortunately, as we later find out, the military is undermined by the spree and so they were warned and escaped. As the military is about to raid the facility, they blow it up. There were probably humans there, since we know that this building was used by humans, as we saw in the flashback with Scylla. Just keep in mind that humans were probably killed here. The spree, smart as they are, drive trucks to the next available airport to distribute it throughout the country while holding human hostages. As you can expect, the general of the army decides to sacrifice the humans and destroy the bombs that would otherwise have killed literally thousands 
of people. Let's just forget for a moment that it is stupid to transport spell bombs. It would be much easier to create those bombs in the place that they are needed to be used since it's literally witchcraft. It is again one of those things that the writers wanted to happen but barely put any thought into. Also, why are the spree holding hostages? Normally you hold hostages to negotiate a deal. The spree are not going to negotiate. They just want to distribute the bombs and kill more innocent humans. There's literally nothing the army can do to stop the spree except kill them all and have humans as collateral. For some reason, the show really wants to make all this decision the worst possible decision because she sends in barely trained recruits to do the task. I'm going to talk about this later, but the army already sends barely trained recruits as war meat to the front lines. One of the main characters literally counting on failing basic training, so she's sent to the front lines to die. How is this any different, and why do the characters suddenly care? Also, in the last episode of season 2, our main characters have to kill a witch to save everyone else, and that is treated as the absolute right decision by almost everyone, except the parties that are being antagonized by the show, or by the literally moustache twirling supervillains. It is almost like characters and the story itself suffer from collective amnesia from time to time. In season 2, the spree calmed down a little since a new enemy emerged and killed half the leadership, even though they operate as independent cells, which will become a problem later on. Anyways, now the spree are not only being hunted by this new enemy, but also by the army. Eventually, the army captures the founder of the spree, Nick de Bataan, former member of the military and inventor of the spell bomb. Nick de Bataan explains to everyone, after killing a witch that tried to extract information from their brain, that the spree has killed exactly as many people as witches have died in military conflict every year. The goal is to inflict the same amount of damage to the human population until they understand and change the conscription laws accordingly. That's fucking bullshit. First, they blew up an entire building to ward off the military. There were probably humans in that building, so they're not killing the exact amount of humans as witches die in conflict, especially since the spree are directly responsible for witch deaths as well. Three witches die when they go to apprehend Nikta, I think roughly 11 witches die when they attack the armory, and roughly 6 witches die when the army attacks a spree cell in the Ukraine. Second, it is a logistical nightmare to at the same time have independently working terrorist cells and having the exact count of witches that die in military conflict. Third, since the spree acts globally, the other question is if they kill the exact number of people representative of each country or if they kill only people in America. I'm sure those other countries are super happy about the mass murders even though they probably have other conscription laws that might be much better than the American ones, making the goal of the spree probably void. And finally, wouldn't you tell the press that you did the mass murder, making it clear what you are doing as a terrorist organization and what your end goal is. Even the fucking Taliban communicate with the press and take responsibility for attacks they have done and deny attacks that have not been involved with. It would be a shame if another group used the same tactics and tried to make organization look bad in the process. Something that literally happens in the show. If your goal is to end conscription, wouldn't it make more sense to go the political route, especially if you are a witch that can easily hide it? You know since the spree has face and body changing technology. For fuck's sake, kill an impersonated president. Or even better, get close to the president and then consistently push the president into choices like Alda does in the show several times. There are like a million ways of a witch to end conscription. And in 300 years, nobody has ever thought of any of those things. Really. Though in the show, the first spree attack was in 1997, so the spree have been operating for roughly 30 years, and neither the army nor the general public have the slightest clue what the spree actually want. Even in the show, Aldo, the president and the vice president upon hearing Nikta's statement are completely surprised. That means that the spree not only failed to take credit for any of these spree attacks, they failed to even write a bloody manifesto where they outline their ideas and end goals. Aldo is entirely in the right, calling the spree the agents of the end. And you might think that maybe Aldo herself or the United States are covering up all the information, and to that I have to say, if the president and the vice president are surprised about Nick's statement, they definitely did not suppress anything because they literally don't know. If the army or Aldo were suppressing information, I have to ask how much power that woman has and why she would suppress information that could be in the long run beneficial to all witches. Also, the spree, like I mentioned, seemed to operate globally, so at least one journalist would spill the beans, right? 
This is either something that is just poorly written or changed over time. In episode 1, the whole framing of the spree attack is supposed to be this menacing event underlined with eerie music. The person that did the attack even walks off slowly with a grim on their face saying, we are the spree. As far as I can tell though, the writers didn't actually want to make the spree the villains. I never wanted the spree to be this sort of easy thing to hate. I never wanted the spree to be this sort of easy thing to hate. Still, if they didn't want to make them villains, it was fumbled so hard that the spree became literally comic book villains. By the end of season 2, the show tries its hardest to convince the viewer that the spree definitely did have a point, but for any person in universe, the spree are just a human hating group of witches that brutally murder innocent people. Even if they knew that the spree wanted to get rid of conscription, the spree would still be brutally murdering innocent people, undermining any message the spree wanted the humans to hear. Rightfully so, in the last episode of the second season, the camera leader, Alban Hurst, says to Nick the Bataan, Miss Bataan, I feel I owe you a debt of gratitude. No one in history has done more to turn the tide of public opinion against witches. You helped pave the way for our return, so... Thank you. The Camarilla are introduced in Season 1, Episode 5, A Bellwetter Season, where they cut out a witch's Throat. There was a little bit of confusion about what was going on in these episodes since the people who cut out the throat of the witch say we are the spree once they light themselves on fire and balloons attack the festivities in the same event. Since in this episode the spree are also trying to extract Rael from the party with the help of Scylla, it was safe to assume that the spree and the Camarilla both attacked at the same time independently from each other. Maybe it was never intended that way, maybe it was, but this was retconned in season 2 and now the Camarilla are completely responsible for the attack on the wedding. Nevertheless, this shows how stupid it is as a terrorist organization that is acting for almost 30 years to not have a press liaison that it can communicate to the public for which horrendous terrorist attacks your organization is responsible for and for what reason it was done. Anyways, the Camarilla hate witches. That's it. I want to remind you that witches have been fighting human wars for 300 years. And uh, if you think the Spree are comically evil, then the Camarilla might as well be mustache twirling super villains. They are cutting out the throats of unidentified witches and are using those throats to fight other witches. Of course, this puts into question their ideology. Imagine a demon hating Christian summoning a demon to fight demon summoners. It would put into question what they actually stand for if they are using the thing that they despise to get rid of the thing that they despise, right? Especially if they have technology that can disable witchcraft. So why would you use witchcraft if you despise witchcraft when you have the technology to disable witchcraft? It seems to have an effective range of a few meters, but since guns don't exist in this world, kind of, it doesn't really matter. It also puts into question why the Camarilla don't use bows, crossbows, slings, spears, axes, lances, tridents, rapiers, pipes, pitforks, or any other weapon than a fucking knife. If they're willing to use weapons of the enemy to fight the enemy, you would expect them to use anything else as well, but let's leave it at that. While the body count of the modern Camarilla is not exceptionally high, they do kidnap a child and try to stone it to death, which is exceptionally evil since that child was brought by one of the members of the Camarilla that also has a child himself. On top of that, that child is also the best friend of his daughter, which makes this guy seem like an unhinged lunatic. Which father would kidnap someone's daughter to stone them? And if you think that's enough, he also killed both her parents and cut out their throats. The Camarilla also commit mass murder on young women to rip out their throats, which begs the question what the fuck the police or the fucking FBI is doing. Apparently the Camarilla is so powerful that they just can't get away with murdering young women in a systematic fashion. And it seems that way because the Camarilla genocide an entire population of witches called the Tarim who are located in fucking China, which makes it even worse because in season 1 it established that the Russian, Indian and Chinese military are surveilling the area because they want the power the Tarim have. How can an independent group of witch hunters genocide an entire group of witches without three militaries noticing anything? Well, they do eventually notice, and the bodies of the Tarim are aligned as a pentagram, which just screams moustache twirling supervillain to me. They also attack the rich military facility in America, uh, which leads us to the question, what is the end goal of the Camarilla? Kill all witches. That's it. They want to kill all witches because they were born witches. There's no reason in hell or heaven that would make me sympathize with the Camarilla. What they want to do is what the Nazis wanted to do with Jews. Complete and utter extermination of witches no matter the cost. 
If you're still not convinced that the Camarilla are just pure evil, I have one more. In the show, we found out that the vice president's daughter is a witch, and like every witch, she's conscripted into the army. Well, it turns out that either the VP is working with the Camarilla, or is Camarilla himself. He allowed Mr. Hurst to infect his daughter with the so-called witch plague that systematically targets and kills witches. And normally the plague will instantly start growing and killing the affected witch, but this one somehow kept her alive. Don't, don't question it, just, just don't. Nevertheless, the witch plague is basically a weapon of genocide. But that's not all. The VP, because he has special rights, smuggles a camera team to record the genocide that was going on in Fort Salem. When our main protagonists eventually get rid of the witch plague in the process killing the VP's daughter, he uses that footage to try to arrest the main protagonists. First, you can literally see what is going on in the footage and this would not hold in any court as evidence for anything, so them getting arrested is a complete and utter bullshit, especially when there are literally eyewitnesses that can literally testify there was no other choice for the main protagonists. Leaving out the logic by the wayside, how can you justify killing your own daughter to kill witches that have been protecting your country for 300 fucking years? You must be insanely evil to sacrifice your own daughter to kill a group that has been protecting your own country for 300 fucking years. Sure, the show tries to make it look like the VP is sad that his daughter died, but he literally did it. No amount of crocodile tears are going to convince me that the VP is remorseful in any way, and mark my words, they're going to try to redeem him in the last season. And what are the Camarilla going to do once you get rid of their own witch military? Are they going to be able to defend against other witch militaries? Sure, you might have the witch plague, but how are you going to deliver the witch plague on a battlefield? With guns, maybe? Uh, oh, oh, wait, those don't seem to exist in this world, right? Don't you also think that witches would rise up against the Camarilla, especially if they have powers? Don't you think the rest of the witch world would come down with fire and fury against the Camarilla once they realize that they are trying to genocide them? Very much like the spree, the Camarilla are fucking insane, mass murderous, and also stupid. Don't get me wrong though, they're not the same. One wants freedom, one wants genocide, but they're still insane murderers. And that leaves us to the two main groups, the army and the state. There is no outcome but victory. We will prevail. Bless this great nation and all who defend her. I'm going to talk about the human society in general here and not only about singular countries, since we're not shown much about humans except when they're used as props to make a point that doesn't make sense. Uh, the show just forgets about the 300 years that have passed and tries to convince the viewers that there will be no pro-witch organization for some reason, even though the civil rights movement happened in this world. Anyways, the United States of America is on a whim of witches because apparently guns don't exist or exist only to a certain degree. They seem to have conventional troops that are used somewhere and the president even threatens all the with the use of conventional troops, but that is pretty much an empty threat. Without the witch military, there is no defense against other witch militaries putting you in the position of not being able to get rid of your own witch military if you don't want to get attacked by other countries. The United States of America, and by extension any other country, are completely dependent on their witch militaries, making the military all over the world the most important and politically powerful institution in any country. The United States, and by extension, any country have a big interest in keeping witches alive and happy for as long as possible since they will be fighting their wars, so it is questionable why the United States of America refuse to do certain things or are antagonistic towards the witch military. For example, it seems like in the show there's no institution like the CIA that takes care of home terrorists like the Spree. You would expect that since the Spree has been attacking since 1997, something akin to the Patriot Act to be enacted after several 9-11s, giving the witch military and the human military or human intelligence a lot of power, but it seems that the show just forgets. The systematical murdering and cutting throats of young women will probably be a case for the FBI since it seems that the murders happened over state lines. The show also always seemed to emphasize that the witch military is responsible for taking care of the spree, 
but wouldn't a human institution be looking and persecuting those cases as well, especially when humans are dying in mass? Even if the CIA or FBI don't exist, they're still the police, which is shown in season 2 episode 4, Not Our Daughters. The police seem to be entirely corrupt though since they're working with the Canrilla and that makes it even weirder why the police isn't conducting investigations against the spree. Isn't the Camarilla all about exterminating witches? Why are they not hunting for the spree? It makes sense that they would not conduct any investigation in the murdering and mutilation of young women, but I would expect the police to be hunting for the spree relentlessly, right? Both are not the case. Uh, the police are incompetent and corrupt at the same time, which seems to be a theme for institutions in this world overall, and that leads us to the witch military. The witch military has existed for 300 long years without fail if you can believe what the show tells us. In those 300 very long and very successful years, slaves have been freed, inventions like television and by extension satellites and rockets, phones, cars, helicopters, nuclear and coal power plants have been discovered, and yet the American witch society and witch military have not changed much. At 18, all witches are required to enter the military by law and stay until they're dead except they aren't. They can retire, as we can see with Quinn, and you can legally dodge service, as we can see with Tally's mom and Tally herself. While the show tries its damned hardest to equate conscription with slavery, even having Rael saying, Conscription is slavery by another name. It's not quite the same, is it? Slaves cannot retire or dodge their service. Slaves retire when they're dead. Slaves don't dodge they die. Conscription and slavery have similarities for sure, but they're not even remotely the same, even if the show wants it to make it that way. Illegal dodgers seem to be able to live relatively normal lives, especially when the military just loses the hereditary line, because after that they have no way to track witches except if they use witchcraft. It just seems like one of those things that the writers just forgot about once again. But while there is a case of a dodging family dying, we get told that by the mass murdering lying sociopath Scylla Ramsholm, but let's believe her for a second. It is not very clear when Anna Kostya says military police as a reaction to Scylla mentioning their parents getting killed if military police refers to human military police or which military police. Either way, there is a problem. Let's assume it is the human military police. How do the humans find out that they are witches since humans don't seem to have testing equipment to figure that out? The Camarilla have testing equipment, which the show shelved as fast as possible, since even the writers noticed that it would be a huge problem if humans could figure out uh, who a witch is. But let's roll with that. How did the human kill a witch? As far as we know, high-powered guns don't exist in the universe, and witches have a spell that can shield them from all sorts of objects, and since the police don't have power dampeners, it would be almost impossible for humans to kill witches. Let's indulge further though. Let's assume the humans caught the witches by surprise and somehow killed them. Why would you kill them? As we established earlier, the state has a big interest in keeping witches happy because they are fighting their wars. So diminishing the witch population is kind of stupid, especially if you might be creating more enemies against the state and conscription by systematically hunting them down. Let's not forget, the show doesn't play in the 16th century. It's a modern times. There would be humanitarian groups screaming and shouting and seeing justice being done against witches, and let us not forget, slaves have been freed in this world. So the civil rights movement actually happened. There might be discrimination against witches, but the systematic hunting and killing of witches that refused to enter the military would be fucking insane. All right, let's assume the witch military police actually are responsible for the systematic killing of Dodgers. Why would witches kill other witches that refuse to enter the military while at the same time complaining about how witch kind is constantly getting smaller and smaller? Think about this. You're decreasing the genetic pool from which witches can be born every time you kill a matriline. Why would you ever kill a witch as a witch? It makes little to no sense and it doesn't take many brain cells to figure that shit out. So. Neither the witch military nor the state have a vested interest in killing Dodgers. Could it be that Scylla's parents have been actually killed by the Camarilla? So either the military or the human military are incompetent because they are not hunting down Dodgers effectively, or malicious because they are killing their most powerful assets without giving them a second chance. What about those who sign up for conscription though? As we established, you do not sign up for life, you can retire and you can legally dodge service. Could there be other things that will relieve you from your duties? 
Let's say you lose an arm or a leg. Well, the show is not very clear if you're able to repair limbs, but Abigail asks her bodyguard that is only there for one single episode why she hasn't her eye repaired. So at least some organs can be repaired. I assume losing any of them wouldn't necessarily relieve you from the duties, but I'm sure if the damage was severe enough, you would be able to drop out of the military, right? Another thing is what if the witch is not able to go into combat because they lack the talent to use witchcraft? Are they going to be just dropped on the front lines to die? Wouldn't it make more sense to leave them be and hope they procreate? What about medics in general? If you can at least repair eyes, wouldn't a retired witch medic open a business that heals people? If your answer is that the magic is outlawed, who is going to accuse a witch of healing someone? You really think that in 300 years there was no amendment that allows retired witches like Quinn to make a healing center? Really? Really in 300 years? Okay, let's roll with all of that. Even if you are not fit for combat or you have abilities that could be of better use, witches will be barely trained and sent into the front lines. Why? If this is truly the case, not only is the military systematically killing their own for not entering the military, they're also sending unqualified recruits to the front line to die. The Camarilla is trying to kill all witches, but I think the military is managing to slowly decrease the witch population all on their own. Give it a few generations and there will be witches no more because they will be all dead. Again, it seems that institutions in this world are either incompetent, corrupt, malicious or all of the above. While I have not talked about the crimes the military have committed, I think it's important to highlight one specifically. So Rael, one of our main protagonists, is in a relationship with a woman called Scylla. Scylla is an undercover agent for the mass murdering terrorist organization The Spree. At some point, the army finds out about Scylla being Spree, captures her, and tries to extract the information from her. Guess how they accomplish that? They torture Scylla. Specifically, General Alda gives her glass to eat with the illusion that it is food after starving Scylla for, I assume, a very long time. They leave an ear piercing sound on for god knows how long and invade Scylla's mind again and again, a thing that seems to be causing a lot of pain. And isn't that ironic? Alder, the witch that ended the witch hunts, is using similar techniques that were used on her to extract information from witches in the past. You would expect the 300 year old witch queen to be a bit more sensible considering these things especially since she literally lived through it. But the writers seem to suffer from collective amnesia sometimes when the plot demands it. A torture by the way has not been entirely outlawed in the US I think but most of the time the information that you get under torture is not really reliable at all. Like I said, either incompetent, corrupt, malicious, or all of the above. The thing is that I'm barely scraping the surface here. While sending barely trained or unqualified recruits to die is a bad enough, the whole witch military culture is insane on its own, but it would take me another hour to point out every single thing stupid about the witch military. This whole video would be only about the witch military if I started talking about everything that is stupid in the witch military. I also can't stop coming back to the idea that if the show was set 50 or 100 years after the Accords, this all would make way more sense. Witches would have not proven themselves to be guardians of American freedom, the public would still probably hate and hunt witches, the witch military itself would probably be small and have less political power, conscription would would still be seen by many witches as the one way out of persecution, the Spree and the Camarilla would suddenly make way more sense and even the reveal that the VP is part of the Camarilla would be infinitely more sensible even though killing his own daughter would still be insane. And sometimes I thought I was going insane because it was really difficult to write anything about characters of the show even though we spend so much time with them. 